Okay, from uh, Dr. David R. Hawkins' work. Um, so the, um, to what extent what can one be free? Um, through muscle testing kinesiology, which is a kind of alternative therapy for, if you like, uh, d uh, finessing information out of the divine realm, um, through, um, it works through, um, for someone who's of high integrity, if you ask a question, your muscles uh, which, uh, make a statement which is aligned with infinite truth, then the body remains strong as long as you're in integrity and you have that uh, humility. So like, uh, my name is Jane, the body will remain strong. My name is Adolf Hitler, your body will go weak. Uh, you can also ask informations of the infinite realm and you'll get answers like, um, uh, the, uh, the builder I'm speaking to is integrous and operates through integrity. Uh, yes, uh, 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 and say his name and your arm will go strong if he's of integrity. So it's able, now through that uh, work, it's found for those who are what's classically called enlightened or leave identification with the body and the personal story and are no longer identified with the personal story they, that the ego used to have and identified with the body. Um, through that research and also through sharing his own experience and also uh, the lives of uh, enlightened teachers um, such as Christ and Buddha, um, uh, information is gathered. So, um, so what happens is um, usually, I mean, this is how I interpret all the work I've done, also Ramana's work, uh, the, the death of the ego, the death and the terror of the ego, once you go through it, if you, if you seek full, um, um, full dissolution, or as St. Francis, the death of the ego, to be at one with the infinite all the time, in dying, that one stays in the eternal, non-stop forevermore, never re-identifying with being this body and these thoughts of my personal story ever, ever again. If you seek that state of the infinite, where the personal story and personal body no longer is the fulcrum or the, the focus of self-identity, the limited identity, then um, classically, in my view, what usually happens is is one goes through a death phase when the ego dies and one knows that it's the ego dying. And, uh, and one has to, and, and Hawkins shared his experience and talked about Christ and uh, Ramana's story is very, very clear on what happened there. So it's the death of the ego where you know that the ego is being burnt off and it's like it's burnt off in the light, the actual, the huge addiction to personal story and addiction to the body. And, and being hyper interested in being uh, lodged into the body uh, and the physical form and the personal thoughts, a little bit like a movie theater. And that there's a big burning off. That's the death of the ego. And then um, the state where the infinite resides forever, hence after. And one can't, you know, it's like one can't even return to being body identified and personal story identified. It's like that's been burnt off in the infinite. So one now is in um, a realm of the infinite. And Hawkins talks about there's still more temptations even in those realms, but they're subtle temptations, not like the usual stuff of the seven deadly sins as we understand them. So um, now what it, it's, it's, uh, it's, in, it's uh, I think it's called divine ordinance. So, uh, or what we'd call karmic contracts or what's preordained or uh, thoughts or ideas or intentions held within the consciousness beforehand as to whether, um, the, you know, one, it's like one leaves this body and enters the realms of higher light and doesn't even return uh, to form. And it says about 50% of people who go through that, you know, because you're going off into the light now. So for there to be, a, it's a bit of a paradox. How can a body still exist and talk and walk uh, if now one has gone into the higher, well, basically what happens is it's like a divine thing. It's like if it's destined from the infinite for the, the body to carry on walking and breathing and for what the, what used to be the personal story being used as a vehicle for information in the, in the collective shadow of um, the suffering of collective humanity, then that can happen. You know, the teach. It seems like there seems to be a, 
everyone else will think it's a personal body and a personal story that's talking but great uh, great light is is released into the world of darkness the collective ego so that can happen sometimes you know it might look like they just go off into the light and, the, and it looks like the body's died but uh, that's not exactly what's happened um so that's the one thing. So as you get, I mean, you can get, you can get to high sainthood, which means you can stay in the body. You're not quite lost the lost your sense of self being in the body with a personal story. So you could aim if you don't want to be enlightened, you can aim to be a high saint if you want. You don't have to. I mean, if you if you want to eat donuts, uh, that that's okay. <laughs> if you want to carry on eating the donuts, that's all right as well. And uh, uh, what else? So okay. So the, and the second part, um, that's how I took a part of the question. Uh, is it possible? I mean, generally, we know that the, the more spiritually connected you are, the less your body obsessed and personal story obsessed, the better things go, more miracles happen, the more people think you've said the right thing and think and they feel good in your presence. So that's all, all, all good. Uh, and uh, so I mean, you know, 12 steps, course in miracles, that all helps with maintaining the highest uh, connection to the infinite. And um, builders, I mean, um, builders, I mean, it's definitely part of my story, uh, dishonesty with myself, with money, and, dis and then experiencing others being dishonest around money towards me uh, as it comes back. Um, so with that, you know, for me, there, I mean, everything happens in perfect synchronicity. You, um, of course, could say it's a chance for forgiveness uh, or the or Lord's Prayer, you know, like I have been dishonest towards other people with their money. So I, know, I must now forgive those who I judge as being dishonest with money. Uh, but there can be other things like stinginess, you know, like, uh, will you do 10 hours of work for me for one pound? Can I, can I haggle you down? <laughs> I got you down. <laughs> well, can, you, uh, can you do the overtime for free uh, this week? Um, <laughs> You know, so uh, that's part. That can be part of the human nature. We all know that one. Um, and um, for me, those those things. Yeah, no. I mean, it's a valid question. It's like um, through prayer and meditation, what's the right thing? You know, sometimes it's the wrong thing to let people uh, give you too little. It's not good for them to give you too little money. You're going like, look, the hourly rate is this, you know, and uh, or the usual rate that builders charge in london is uh, 80 pounds an hour uh so you uh, i'm not going to give you 10 pounds but i'm not going to give you 700 pounds an hour to do some building work you know that's a fair rate so you then if you know the fair rate and you feel god's guiding you on the fair rate then uh, the thing uh, oh, you might you know you might have some uh, baggage forgive him for wanting a cheap rate uh, and and also forgive yourself for not wanting to speak up and do all of that stuff and then usually the, um, pray for a miracle and then usually um, things can go uh, much better anyway but um, I'll stop